October was a, was a, an interesting month. It would have been a month normally where we would have. Is there ever never an interesting month? Well, true. They're all they're all unique and special in some way. But uh, but yeah, in October we, we would have expected to see just like September we would have expected to see a bit of a bump in activity. We didn't really get that except for a bump in new listings. For sure. And there's a lot more homes in the market now than there has been in, at points in the past. And I I was reviewing data for Hamilton recently where. In less than two years, we've seen the number of available homes on market uh, increase between 11 and, 12 per, uh, 11 and 12 times. That's a lot more choice for buyers out there. So that's an opportunity, but of course they're facing challenges with interest rates and so on. And, and the, the part that just worries me a little bit is that you know, the, the day will come when the tides will turn again and you'll see the market activity pick up. And when that does, prices will go up. Yeah. Um, and at that point, you'll have people thinking, they missed an opportunity back when the prices were low at, at this time or uh, you know some other time that they were when they were on the market looking yeah i still don't think the market's bottomed out yet um, if you listen to the media obviously you and i talk a lot about the difference between what we track and post versus what the media says but if you listen to the media uh, they're, they're already forecasting interest rates coming down they're already talking about what's going to happen in 2024 now my crystal ball just doesn't work so i've stop relying on it but Nor should if, you. <laughs> if I look at what's going on out there and what's happening again I keep going back to the fact it's not just the housing issues happening today all we've heard about is supply and demand issues for the last three and a half four years right. we need to build more houses but today we've got 10 times the inventory in the market that we did 18 to two months 18 to 24 months ago right we're carrying more inventory obviously we have more financial constraints on buyers today they can't buy as much home or can't qualify for as much can't afford those big payments so they're holding off and waiting it becomes a challenge now. Do you buy when the interest rates higher and the prices are lower? Or do you buy when the prices are higher and the interest rates are lower? So I've always told people, I don't believe interest rates are going to drop back down to one to two percent again. I think that ship has sailed. I think so too. Uh, so if we think we're going to settle somewhere in around that three percent, maybe three to four percent range as a, as a new kind of baseline we're going to get to. So you're going to save about two percent interest rate. A simple calculation for people to consider, should I buy or sell? Should I buy now or wait? Is Look at what you can buy the house for today. What could you have bought it for 18 months ago? If the savings for argument's sake is $200,000, $250,000, now do your calculation on the interest. If I get a mortgage today, five years at 6% versus five years at 3%, what's the difference in the payment? What's the difference in the interest? Because mm -hmm. if you sign today at 6% 6 and it drops dramatically, you can always break your mortgage, pay the penalty and get a lower mortgage rate. You also, but you can't go back, sorry, to the seller and say, hey, listen, prices have come down. I'm going to need to come down $250,000 so what I should have bought it for last time. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, you don't get to do that. No. And, so, and the thing is, you, you also have, um, like, like if it's a 25-year mortgage, it's not a 25-year term. Exactly. So whatever term you went with, whether it was one year, two years, three years, five years, you're going to have an opportunity to change that rate without even breaking the But mortgage. you can't change what you bought the house for. No. So no. if the better deal is now... I tell people to go out and look now and buy. On the flip side from a sales side, if you're buying and selling in the same market, you're dealing with the same adjustments on both sides. Right. Track the neighborhoods that you're buying and selling in, find out what that differentials look like over the last 12 to 18 months, and decide is it the right time for you to make the move. If you could do the same move in the same period. And, and that's precise. And work within the same conditions. Precisely why you generally want to have your purchase and your sale timed as closely together as possible to minimize anything going sideways in between. Exactly. So, and those who can time it out and are flexible, if you can sell during the peak, maybe rent for a year, park your money in the bank for a little bit, you make some money in a GIC and buy when the market kind of, when you feel it's bottomed out, that's about the best win-win. But again, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you when that's going to happen. No, no, I, I don't either. I, I did see one at the Ringling Museum in Sarasota a couple weeks ago, uh, but I don't think it works. <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, there, there's opportunity out there though. Like I, I can think of a house right now that's currently on the market in Burlington. The seller requires a very specific closing date and it's coming fast. It's only about four weeks away. Yeah. It's priced right now more attractively than the houses that most recently, like within the last month, sold right near it. And you just need to find that right buyer. And so of course I'm racking my brain trying to think and sharing it with people who I think might be interested because whoever picks up an opportunity like that is likely going to pay far less yeah. than the neighbor. And the closer it gets to that date he needs, the more flexible the seller's gonna be. You've got the leverage. Absolutely. And so, so there's opportunity. For sure.